Monday, December 19th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board recorded by ACMI. Uh, first up on our agenda this evening is public hearing for EDR special permit docket number 3523 by Jacqueline Marr for Upbeat Cycling LLC and Fiola Realty Trust. I apologize if I butchered anyone's names. Uh, regarding change of use to a 3,000 square foot portion of the building at 6 Schuler Court. So if the proponent and representatives could come forward, have a seat, introduce yourselves, please. Welcome. Um, thank you. Uh, it's nice to be here. My name is John Marr, and I'm an attorney representing Jackie Marr, the uh, proposed operator of the Upbeat Cycling. Uh, with us also tonight is Josh Penalosa of the firm Brown Penalosa, who will speak to the uh, architectural aspects. I would like to address uh, the beginning, if I may, and also uh, I should add that Mike and uh, Eric Faola, uh, Mike being the trustee of Faola Realty Trust, who owns the property and will be renting, uh, subject to the board's approval, of course, of a special permit under environmental design review. Uh, Eric, uh, Mike's son, is here. He is the operator of Mystic Wine Shop just around the corner from School of Court. Um, Jackie, uh, it's, it's my pleasure and privilege to represent her. She intends to bring a vibrant new business to a very much underutilized, uh, actually fairly unattractive, uh, and uh, but vacant, largely vacant, uh, but prominent uh, uh, part of the major district major business district, district uh, B2A at the corner of School Accord at Mass Ave. We here are seeking relief under, as you know, under environmental design review, potential relief under Article 8, uh, zone uh, parking requirements, as well as a variance for a, a small, tasteful sign to add visibility for the business uh, from Mass Ave. Uh, it's important, I think, at first, uh, and, and, I, and I, I will be as brief as possible. We, uh, we're, at best, the second most important thing on your agenda. We see you have a holiday celebration. We don't need to infringe <laughs> on, on that in any way. Yeah, all the welcome. <laughs> <to come. laughs> uh, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's important first for the board to understand that what the prior use of the property was, because that impacts your inquiries into what I'm sure is going to be your concerns about traffic management and parking. Prior, uh, until fairly recently, the property was operated as Arlington Lithograph, owned by the Fayola family. I met with Michael Byrne, the zoning enforcement officer, as you know, uh, is, uh, director of inspectional services. We had uh, some considerable discussions about what the parking requirements uh, would have been. Uh, there are no uh, parking sites on the, there are no parking spots on the site. Uh, none, none are planned, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, if you consider what the prior use was, which was uh, light industry uh, printing, uh, the calculations under Article 8 would have yielded a requirement for 17 or 18 parking spots on site. Be that you, you, you do the calculation either by 75 percent of the uh, combined shift, uh, employee shift totals, which would have been 25 to 35, and even taking a lower uh, number, you would have required 17 spots. If you do it by calculating the square footage, 600 square feet, uh, one spot for every 600 square feet, given that it's over 10,000 square feet, you would, yield, would have yielded again 17 or 18 required spots. Obviously, that, then that, that did not occur. Based upon my discussion with uh, Mr. Byrne, uh, he had a conversation with your uh, planning personnel. Before I forget, by the way, I really need, on behalf of my client, uh, to thank the planning staff who have been really very, very helpful at every turn uh, in this application, uh, both Jenny and Laura. And, and my thanks uh, on behalf of my client and myself uh, go to them. So if, uh, based upon a discussion, Mr. Bird determined that it was a pre-existing non-conforming uh, parking situation. That's reflected in your the planning department's uh, written report to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, even if uh, you chose uh, not to adopt that, uh, 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 determination. Uh, we think we have uh, complied, or we, with your uh, with your uh, consideration, we think that we've made every effort to uh, accommodate parking. Uh, as you know, on the, this board uh, sponsored at a recent town meeting uh, a warrant article <coughs> to reduce potentially up to 75 percent of the required parking spots in a in a business district. Uh, under Article 4, I'll strike that article, uh, Section 4.1 of the Table of Use of Health Club, 
uh, it would require, given that there were 3,000 square feet, it would require one parking spot for every 300 square feet. If you were to, uh, again, not adopt uh, the uh, parking, uh, the uh, building commissioner's determination on pre-existing pre non-conforming, you would have the option of reducing it from 10 spots to two and a half or essentially three. Uh, we have secured uh, licenses from adjoining businesses for in front of Mystic Wine Shop uh, for, the evening, for the morning classes and uh, from RCN, a scant point two uh, miles away, three or four minute walk to the site. Uh, four spaces for the evening and uh, uh, weekend uh, classes. It's important to understand that Jackie's business model uh, is for early morning classes and late afternoon classes. For a large part of the day, as reflected in the, uh, one of the exhibits uh, showing the projected class schedule, uh, the classes will begin in the morning about 5.30 or so and end about 8.30. In like fashion, they will uh, begin again around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and end around 8 or 9. For a large part of the day, the, there will be no parking associated with the site other than perhaps an employer or two because the facility will be closed. The uh, staggering of these classes uh, was meant not only to accommodate people going to work and getting uh, their work out before work or getting their work out after work, but to accommodate what we certainly understand is uh, sensitivity to the operation of Arlington High School across the street. The drop-off time for our students uh, is in the morning uh, from about a quarter of eight to quarter past eight. Uh, the, cl uh, the uh, last class in the morning will, uh, will end uh, after that uh, uh, drop-off period. And again, in the afternoon, the uh, afternoon classes, evening classes will be well after the pickup time for students, which is approximately from 2 to 2.45. Uh, the, uh, it, with regard to, uh, by the way, we did uh, take an opportunity to meet with the school superintendent, uh, Dr. Bodie, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we did um, uh, explain as, uh, what uh, was intended by Jackie's Enterprise, and we hopefully uh, addressed her uh, concerns about uh, parking and traffic and how it might impact the high school operations. The uh, sixth school of court uh, is uh, right on Mass Ave, obviously, uh, abuts it, and uh, it uh, is, you see the 77 and 79 bus routes. Uh, there's, in fact, a bus stop uh, at the corner of school of court and uh, Mass Ave. Um, the uh, Jackie will speak in a moment uh, with the board's permission about how she will uh, have incentives for people who clients who utilize Mass Ave, uh, uh, the, the bus routes, uh, who walk or uh, take uh, uh, advantage of the Minuteman Bikeway, which has access a uh, short distance away on Mill Street. Uh, the uh, <coughs> Jackie intends. Uh, to, uh, again, provide incentives. Uh, she'll speak to that. Uh, I particularly commend to your consideration uh, the uh, Exhibit 1, which is our traffic and parking management plan, which goes into considerable detail as to how those incentives will work. Jackie's business intends to be a good neighbor to the surrounding businesses, and particularly to Arlington High School. Uh, we think there will be a symbiotic relationship between the enterprise and the high school. Uh, there will be employment opportunities for students who wish to uh, become uh, cycling instructors, or and there will be discounts for students utilizing uh, the facility. Uh, there will be substantial financial investments, both made by Jackie, uh, who will talk to that in a moment, uh, as well as the Fayola family. The Fayola family uh, are, uh, are have been working with the building inspector to update the. Uh, fire suppression systems, uh, the heating systems, uh, and handicap access. Uh, I think uh, after, or hopefully after you've heard uh, our presentation, uh, you will consider favorably our request for uh, uh, granting of the special permit under environmental design review, uh, as well as for a sign variance. Uh, you'll see the uh, sign, proposed sign, in one of the uh, uh, final exhibits. 
And with that, uh, and the board's uh, chairman's permission, I would ask Jackie to tell you about Upbeat Cycling. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, so as John said, my name is Jackie Maurer, and uh, don't worry, everyone gets my last name wrong. No one ever says it right, so, <laughs> <laughs> so say it however you like. Um, I am a uh, long-term Arlington resident, having lived here pretty much my entire adult life uh, with my partner, Lori, who is in the back. Um, we, uh, we have lived here almost 30 years, been homeowners for over 20 years here. Um, over on the Pleasant Street side of the pond. Um, so I'm very committed to Arlington. Um, I am myself an avid cyclist, use the Minuteman bikeway all the time and the environs around here, and an active spinning instructor. Um, I'll tell you more about spinning in a minute. Um, and this business uh, not only will bring a business that is owned by a local and myself a neighbor, so I'm very concerned about the town, um, I will bring diversity to the town as uh, the business will be an LGBT woman-owned business. Um, so I know there's goals around diversity in the town for that as well. Um, let me tell you a little bit about spinning. I, I heard Ken speaking about spinning and slipping out of a, <laughs> a cleated shoe or something before we started. Uh, spinning is, is, a, uh, is the uh, name of a, it's actually a trademarked term for a very specific kind of indoor cycling. Um, but this is indoor group cycling classes on stationary bicycles uh, taught by certified instructors that are uh, set to music. So spinning itself has been around for about 25 years. To be a spinning studio, you have to do certain things to meet their requirements, certification, buy their bikes, do all kinds of different things. I am opening uh, an indoor cycling studio, not specifically uh, spinning, uh, and specifically I am opening what is called a boutique indoor cycling studio. So boutique has some very um, specific meanings. So you can go spin in most of your big box gyms anywhere you know in the country. Boutique is a new uh, and very popular genre of indoor cycling. Uh, it kind of is what it sounds like, which is it's a little more upscale, uh, in some cases a lot more upscale. Um, it is, um, you know, the, the emphasis is first and foremost put on customer service when people walk through your door. Who's ever gone to a gym and been completely ignored when you've walked through the door? They don't even notice you getting there. So the emphasis on service, creating what I would call almost a spa-like environment. So instead of having that horrible environment when you get there where you're like, oh my God, I hate going because it stinks and it, it's intimidating because there's hard body people there. Um, boutique cycling is about getting people into a pleasant, enjoyable environment that's focused on client service, social engagement with people, other people going to the studio. Uh, you have a very high-end, sophisticated riding theater. Most spin studios in your gym, you basically have to pull your own bikes over. You have to clean them afterwards. They don't maintain the bikes. It's, it's you, you fall out of your pedals because they're not attached correctly. So the real emphasis is creating a sensory experience from beginning to end. It's really enjoyable. And my motto is making fitness fun. And, and basic philosophy is that People don't work out, not because they don't have time, they don't work out because it's about up there in funness with t cleaning your toilets, right? So you don't go because it sucks, you know, to excuse my language. So people will come here because it's really, really fun. It's set to music, the classes are always different, the instructors are spectacular, they're trained, they're giving you lots of different classes. So it's really a nice setup. It's a, the kind of place when you walk in, you're like, wow, I want to hang out here. It's not like going to the gym. It's more like walking into your local coffee shop where you could see yourself spending a little bit of time. So uh, that's kind of what Upbeat Cycling is about. It's called Upbeat Cycling because it's all about the fun, having an upbeat, positive attitude, making you cheerful, changing your mood. After that lousy week at work, you go in and you uh, ride it off. Um, so this is a very fast-growing genre of indoor cycling and fitness. Um, they're popping up all over Boston. Most of you may have probably heard of SoulCycle, which is really the innovator in this space. They started in 06 in New York City and they've just like grown like hotcakes. There's a lot of independent studios that have also opened up for Boston. 
like me, this will be the first and very unique to the northwest suburbs. The closest one like it is in Harvard Square. There's also one opening up in Burlington out in that adjacent mall to the, to the mall. <laughs> Not mine, somebody else's. Uh, so it's very high end, it's premium, it tends to attract, I would say about 80% women, 20% men. Everybody's welcome, but it's just the genre tends to attract more women. Uh, what's great about this is um, they're very influential shoppers and purchasers for their households. So they will bring dollars into the community, uh, adjacent businesses like, like, you know, nail salons, hair salons, wine and liquor stores, <coughs> uh, <laughs> all these types of shops, uh, restaurants tend to do very well and see an uptick in their business when indoor cycling studios come around. Uh, I can say from personal experience, so I used to teach over in Belmont in Cushing Square, and I never used to go over there. And when I started go teaching over there and going to Boston Body, Pilates, and where I also taught, um, we started using the Spirit of Gourmet over there. We got <coughs> nails done over there. We went to the restaurants over there. All of a sudden, it's become a, a, a center for activity, and that's what I would expect would happen in this case. Um, I'm also going to be, this is going to be a values driven business. The model for a lot of these businesses is to give back to the community. So you attract people in, but you also, you have this, this studio that isn't being used a lot of the times and you just make it available to people for charity rides. If someone's doing the PMC and they want to have some people come in and pay to go <coughs> and raise their money to do the PMC, use it for, for various fundraising efforts. Um, <coughs> so. Like I said, I have a very strong commitment to Arlington as a, as a resident here. I think this is an ideal place. Uh, there's not a lot of people uh, doing this in this immediate vicinity. Um, I've literally been searching for a space to open this studio in <coughs> this town for almost two years. There is not a lot of space that's the right space for this type of activity. And I believe I found a wonderful space in Sixth School or Court. So I'm very hopeful that I'll be able to open the studio there. As John uh, referenced, I will be making a very significant investment in that building, as well as the Fayol family, um, to uh, fit out uh, the, the, uh, the space to be this top end cycling studio and deliver you know, this type of experience to my, uh, to my guests. Um, so it's gonna be very unique, very popular, and there's nothing like it in any of the immediate vicinity, I would say in about a four or five mile radius. Um, so, uh, as John said, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tra transportation demand management plan in, in the third tab. Um, he talked a little bit about it, but I will say that, that you know, because I'm, my open times are when people have the time before or after work to come. So, it's a very much a counter cyclical business. When everybody else is open in this environment, you know, out there, the banks and the high school, I'm, I'm pretty much closed during those times. I'm going to be doing things when it's pretty empty over there and believe me I've sat there for about four hours on mornings in the TD bank parking lot taking pictures and watching people come and go <laughs> and looking at what the traffic pattern is and looking at it in the afternoon. So um, it's, it's very counter cyclical to the other activity in the area. Um, we've also made the parking arrangements with RCN and, and, and with uh, Mr. Wine Shop for some additional parking off street parking. Um, Excellently located for the buses uh, and other buses that come to town. Obviously, other buses come down into the center and the 67 coming up from Al Life and, and down from Turkey Hill. Um, so it's, it's very well located. I'm going to be doing a lot of incentives, things like subsidizing T passes for my staff, trying to encourage them to, to, to take the bus. If they're not going to take the bus, I'm going to give them a cash incentive to ride their bike to the studio. Um, so anything we can do to take that off, I live pretty nearby, I'm going to get that, that bike into a commuter mode my, myself. Um, we're going to be adding some uh, uh, covered, secured bike parking both in front, uh, Josh will talk more about that, in front and on the side so that people can safely park their bikes. Um, and I'll have incentive programs, little challenges, things that kind of uh, get into people's uh, idea of being more local and green and, and you know thinking about health and fitness. So if you, if you live 10 minutes away, 
you know, I'm going to be giving people rewards points, just like, you know, most rewards points you get at Starbucks or something when you buy something. The more times you can show to me that you rode your bike or you walked or you took the bus or your car pulled or something, you're going to earn points and you can win free classes um, for, for, you know, building up points, reward points for using alternative means for coming to the studio. So hopefully people will, you know, get their sink their teeth into that and look at it as a, a fun challenge and and take some of the the weight off of of the parking um, the other thing is there's there's an awful lot of people who live um, right you know five minute walks if you look at you know the density of Arlington I don't need to tell you I mean five seven minute walk there's a lot of people that live in the, uh, in, in that that radius around this location it's it, this is when you look at the map this is a really nice central location for the town it's it's pretty accessible to almost everybody who lives in town so and uh, so I, th I think you know we've we've done our best I mean obviously Arlington has its its parking issues and its traffic issues um, but I think we've we've taken a lot of um, really you know strong efforts to try to mitigate the effect of that and because we will be uh, you know, people aren't coming and parking for three hours. They're coming and, and, and parking for their class and maybe a little before time and after time. So there is going to be a constant turnover when I'm in, when I'm open. People aren't coming and parking for three hours. They're coming for class. They're coming and they're going. So hopefully that will mitigate some of that as well. So uh, with that, I will I will hand over to um, Josh. Josh. Yeah, thanks, I'm Josh Fenelos with Brown Fenelos <laughs> Architects. Um, I'm going to orient you to the building a little bit. Uh, um, this, uh, many of you know this corner, there's actually two properties. There is Six Schuler Court, Schuler Court, which wraps into the Mystic Wine Building and wraps around uh, this gas station up front. That is not part of this property. That's a separate property altogether. So what we're talking about here is this building. It has this gabled kind of Swiss chalet structure on the back. And that's attached to a one-story industrial building uh, that was built in the 40s, and that heads back. Uh, the first floor is about 6,300 square feet, and the basement is about 4,700 square feet. Jackie is proposing to take over about 3,000 square feet on the first floor. As part of this proposal, we're also putting in a new handicapped entrance that's going to run to the right of uh, this area here, the loading dock, and up this side of the building. There's going to be, it's all going to be covered, and there's going to be covered bike parking in the back here, as well as some open bike parking up here. So there'll be six spots in the back and four up here. We're also proposing some signage that you'll see in the elevations um, for this location right here. The a tab standing four. sign. Um, What's the parking for? Sorry. To bike, uh, bike parking. Oh, six spots in the back. Six yeah, in the gotcha, back, which gotcha. is gotcha. covered, and four open. Got it. Yeah, sorry. Six bikes or six racks? Six bikes. Um, I can walk you through. <coughs> so this is the front of the building. This is a tenant that is unknown at this point. This would be Jackie's tenancy back here. The ramp comes up the side to the bike parking. There's a lobby area, stairs to the basement and the entrance to Upbeat Cycling here. So the bike parking is enclosed? The bike parking is not enclosed, but it's up on a deck and it's covered. So you access it by? Going up the ramp. You have to go up the ramp yep. to be Yeah, but there is also bike parking here. There are four spots here. Gotcha. So, so it's beyond inclement the weather, you can go to the park, you can go to the covered area, otherwise you can park up here. So other than the ramp, there's, there's no addition to the building, it's just a, That's right. a ramp to get into the door there. Yeah. That's right. Do you lose the tree because of the ramp? No. Okay. Where is the tree? In re reference to the. Um, <coughs> no, I see it on the pl uh, pictures. I don't have it on plan. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's presumably to the right of the bike rack. Yeah, it's on the neighboring property. So, I don't. This, this picture, you may. This picture might be more helpful to see larger. Um, but the ramp's coming up here. So that's right. Off to the right of it. Okay. And the bikes are beyond the door. The door is right, kind of like, looks like not quite two thirds of the way up. And That's then right. You've got the bike parking after the door. So the the door is going into the second bay here. Okay. So it's at the end of that. Uh, 
Um, six Schooler Court is a two-way street, but it's effectively a dead end. There's some <coughs> administration, uh, school administration parking back here, but it's not a through street all the way around. This is the exit only from the high school that comes up here, it comes into Mass Ave. There are three residences here. If you go down Schuler Court, do you, yeah. the public could go around, circle around? You can't actually, you get stopped, there's a gate. So no, wait, and that, that little turn around there where your yeah, fence is. Yeah, I think it's right here, but it may be right you there. You can actually go all the way around. That's blocked. Can you get all the way around? In the yeah. back. Okay. There's like one part, that pathway is blocked. No vehicles can go in that. I'm sorry. I'm like you can actually back. go all the way around. <coughs> you can go around the building, but not in that part that where your pencil is. But if someone drops off, do they just turn around? Yeah. Where? Up there? Now you're usually going down by the high field up there. There's right. a little. There's That's a what little I thought. Turn right. right there by that upper field. Right there. Right there. Yep. Yeah, actually. That's what I thought. Yeah. You can go down there and turn yeah, around. There's, yeah, there's a lot. Of, well, I mean, not on a game day, but there's anything else. It's usually okay. Uh, the proposed elevations, you have a signage, um, some signage info in the back of the packet as well, I believe. In tab 5. This shows the signage in elevation <coughs> here, as well as here. And the that's signage it. itself, yes, is in tab 4. Is there illumination it's for the uh, signage? It's a, it's a there is, it's yeah. It's, uh, what is the terminology? It's residential style um, landscape lighting from below. So it's grown up, showing Ground up? up. This is the covered um, access, handicapped access, up to the ramp that comes up and the bike parking beyond um, with the canopy over it. <coughs> much it. These are the so where's the sign exactly? So the sign is the right here. Right in front of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and is it, this shows it as kind of in front of the... <coughs> That's right, it's a freestanding sign. Yeah. Yep. Is there concern about this kind of wayfaring <coughs> confusion there? Well, actually, Given that's... that it's in the back, and this kind of... I know if I saw that sign, I'd, <coughs> I'd head right to that door right there, right? That would be... Once. The goal Once. was to actually yeah. bring people past that door. So to get people past, and then this is going to be tumbled concrete pavers, so uh, walking up this way. The problem is that the driveway, or it's not necessarily a problem, but the <coughs> driveway here, we didn't want to pinch down this zone. And because they actually have a pretty narrow driveway next door. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether you need just an arrow or something, though. We'd probably have some arrows or, and also something like on the back there on the awning or, or something. Yeah. We haven't worked out exactly. Oh, you're going to have an awning back there? There's going to be an awning and. Well, and that's the canopy. Oh, there's going to be a canopy the whole canopy. way yeah. on the ramp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My understanding of the bylaws, you can do directional type signs. So we'd probably figure out what kind of direction of just sign to give people a this way type mm -hmm. of thing. We might even even do something like you know if it's you know you know permitted, just even a, a little stenciled like painting on the sidewalk that says you know kind of this way. What about lighting? Um, do you have any uh, wall packs or some sort of light up that little? I yeah. see that's a, little, a nice advantage of having a little courtyard there that you sort of have set up in front of that loading dock there. So this area, yeah, this area, actually, frankly, I'm not quite sure about lighting up here. We haven't sort of come to terms with that yet. But we are lighting uh, the sidewall back along mm -hmm. the ramp. Can we talk about maybe encouraging you guys to put some sort of lighting there? Just to, yeah, no I think having sort of like a little courtyard kind of atmosphere that, look, that could be very nice there. That would be a nice way of inviting people around the corner and, and down. And it's part of the, you know, get that style your your yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, I'd, I'd very much like to see some some nice like pathway lighting. They could be little solar lights like put in the yard that, you know, get some sun and and depending if those would work or just some low level uh, LED lighting that lights the pathway. The pathway because you don't want the, the neighbors that live there don't want to see the bright lights. Yeah, right. it would do yeah. something low yeah. that's like pathway lighting, you know, <laughs> like when the lights I, go I, out on an airplane. <laughs> I think you need something though, especially since <clears throat> your classes are going to be early in the morning or later in the day, which at certain times of the year, either yeah, way, it'll definitely. be dark. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, uh, I do have one more. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I know you don't have any showers. No. Um, it's, 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 I don't mean to cut you off. Or, yeah, okay. um, it's pretty common for uh, studios um, that are located outside of, of you, know, you, will you will find like in Boston studios having showers, but they still won't have a big locker room set up. They'll have like three single restrooms and there'll be a shower in them for people who really, really have to. Um, this is more along the model that you would see in yoga studios and Pilates studios and, and uh, smaller um, dedicated type of fitness spaces where they would typically, outside of downtown Boston, not have showers. Um, I will be doing some, some nice amenities. Uh, there will be some uh, individual packet wipe down, um, you know, nice smelling wipes that you can use to kind of just wipe things down. Um, some hair dryers for just drying, drying off, powders, um, nice soaps and hand lotions in the bathroom. So things that people can do to clean up a little bit. Typically what is going on though with, with a studio in a location like this is that people are coming before work. So they're, they're throwing on sweats, they're coming down to the studio, they're going to class, they're heading back home, showering, getting ready for work and going to work. Or they're coming on their way home and they, they come, they go to a class, they go home and have dinner, shower, whatever, afterwards. So, mm -hmm. I, I belong to uh, two gyms, uh, one in Arlington and one in, down on my, near my Cape home. And I, I'm a star, I mean, when I have a workout, I'm going to wear a shower afterwards. But it's, it, it amazes me how few people shower now after their workouts. It sounds counterintuitive, but uh, showers, uh, people taking showers after workouts are the exception. It never used to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you belong to a gym, you'll notice that that, in fact, is the custom now. People prefer to go home and clean up. Like, um, I don't have much. Uh, just, uh, so the garage door for now is gonna stay the same. The loading dock is not gonna change pretty much the front other than taking this, uh, looks like this little uh, uh, piece of the iron uh, fence down, right. putting the sign, and then I think you said a bike rack over there as That's well. Right. So the sign is out front and then the bike rack behind it or something? It's, or where is um, it? in plan, it's sort of adjacent. The, the sign actually creates, fills in, So okay, so that's this how is the bike parking right oh, there. Oh, got it. Okay. So we take out this front piece of iron fence and three or four feet back, or four feet back, and put the sign post in. Okay, and and um, the lighting on the sign again is up is ground or? up lights. Yes. Up lights. Yeah, okay. Hmm. And yeah, so because there's no tenant as of yet for the front of the building, a lot of that is reserved for that tenant too. Make those decisions. Uh, I think that's mainly what I have. I just restate what I said before earlier, and I would encourage uh, to maybe accelerate that little loading dock courtyard mm -hmm. a little bit more. I realize the left half of it and the back half of it is is for the tenant up front, mm -hmm. but, but along that side there where you have the, um, the brick paved yeah. way and, and, and the shrubs, maybe some sort of lighting or some sort of thing that you can sort of. As soon as you come around that corner, but you see something going on, yeah. it sort of draws you down. Sounds great. I think it's an opportunity there to do something that could draw you down that way a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it's my strong desire to to make it a very tra attractive entryway that's it's quite obvious. Um, depending on the space, um, maybe some a planter or something. Um, I've also talked with the fails about, bef at least until there is another tenant, to attract some attention and make it kind of noticeable and festive to use some of that left-hand part of the front courtyard. Maybe put some like outdoor tables and colorful umbrellas just so when people get out of class in the warmer weather times to be able to go out and congregate and be outside in the fresh air. Um, I'm not serving any food or anything. I'm not asking for a permit for that. But you know, people do like to just kind of after class have a, a little chance to you know, stand around and talk a, a little bit, and that would you know be attractive. It certainly from that intersection would signal to people 
Wow, there's something fun going on there. Nothing's been going on there for a long time. There's something going on there now. Um, and, and it is also, you know, we, we've also discussed um, um, painting the building uh, just to differentiate it from the decrepit gas station on the <coughs> corner. Everybody thinks it's the same building, and it's not. And so it would very much um, distinguish Six Schooler Court from that property on the corner. Mm -hmm. And then my last question is, um, how do you manage your trash? Uh, is it through the back way or through the front or storage somewhere? Or, or I, I'm um, not assuming you have much trash. But yeah, there's not going to be uh, a lot of trash. Uh, we'll have recycling containers, so um, if people have containers that they need to recycle. I am selling no bottled water on premises. Um, I will be using uh, filtered refrigerated water and encouraging people to bring water bottles or buy water bottles to refill and not create waste. So I won't be having them, unless they bring them with them, they will not have that waste. So I'll have some cleaning supplies and, th and <coughs> you know, things like that. And I saw in the, I saw in the proposal that all laundry will be done on site so you won't have a linen truck coming back and forth every week. Yeah, it, it really works out and you have, you have uh, <coughs> reception staff and while people are in class, you toss towels in in so the laundry. I'm you take it out and fold it, and it's all just. Yeah. Where would you store the trash cans? And put put uh, them store. Where would I? Um, that's that's dock. yeah. yeah the loading dock. dock. Yeah, the shared loading dock right here. I think you might. So you front. you put it up front. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's it's not in view. It's inside right here, right? It would be inside. It's, it's, in, in, it's in its separate space. Blue area there. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Okay. So so that's a communal space then. You're saying. See, it's a serving booth for both tenants. Right. And, and uh, the trash cart would just come and to the loading dock, open the door, and take the trash and close well, it back down. Right, uh, when Arlington Lithograph was in business, we would just put our trash barrels on the street, on the, on the sidewalk, and the town would just hold, you know, because they would do the pickup on Wednesday, and they would just put the trash in that way. Um, we never had a trap, have a truck pull up to the loading dock. So the town then would just pick it up on the street. Does the town pick up? Um, this is trash? Yeah. You have to buy, you have to buy uh, commercial stickers. Okay. <laughs> All right. No from question. the town. And they're like $1.50. And you got to slap an orange sticker onto the bag. And okay. That's your, your tax. So you, just, you, <laughs> so you just push it out to the front of the, front of the street for pickup right, exactly. then? Exactly. Just on, like you do it on the, trash day. You're home. Like you do in house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I didn't see any. Yeah. No, it's a good question. Okay. Andy. I'm all set. You asked my question. David. It looks good. Uh, I just had some questions about the transportation demand management mm -hmm. plan and, and uh, parking. And um, first of all, I, I think you're doing a lot of interesting and, and, and positive things trying to uh, get people out of their cars. So um, <laughs> um, thank you for doing that. Um, it's so a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'm not as I'm. I'm not that concerned about, uh, well, I'm not concerned at all about um, the lack of on-site parking, both because of um, the agreements you've reached with, with the two nearby businesses to share their parking, but um, given uh, kind of the, the timing of your classes, mm -hmm. there is a significant amount of on-street public parking mm -hmm. available um, in, uh, within a couple of blocks. Right. Um, so. Um, so that doesn't really, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Um, uh, one thing, um, you, you do um, have, uh, if, I, if I was uh, counting correctly on the, on the plan, um, you could have more than 30 people in a class. Yeah, 30, 32 people. Um, and um, if, you're, if your TDM plan is really successful, you only have space for 10 bicycles. Right. Um, so what happens if more people ride their bikes? Um, well, um, we would make efforts to accommodate that in some other ways. If it looked like we were starting to have an issue with the shortage of bike parking, um, then honestly what I would do is I would talk to the fails and say, what can we do to create some more bike parking? I will be taking some storage space. Um, in the basement 
mm-hmm. for things, you know, just like cleaning materials and things like that and spare bikes. Um, and it's it's possible we could create a little bit of space down there. There's a, there is a freight elevator. We could potentially um, let people park some bikes down in, in, in that. Is that there also area. available bike parking at the wine shop? Uh, behind, so in the building and in the loading dock area, that's a fairly large space. Um, and there is enough room to store several bikes in there as well. And also in the front of the building where the, on the other side where there's you know, water iron fences, we have no problem opening that up where Jackie was asking Sir. about putting in, um, putting in tables. We have no problem adding bike parking in there as well uh, on the side of the building. And then there's um, also on the back side of my store, there's a where there was a greenhouse, there's plenty of space for us if we had to add a bike rack okay. that people could uh, put a bike, the bike racks could be added there to support Jackie's business. Okay, Thanks. great. I mean, I mean, I'm glad you're thinking about it because I, I want you to be very successful with what you're trying to. I would to love do if here. we had a problem <laughs> yeah, that's right. like not, um, <laughs> you know, more than ten bikes stacked up there. No. I would be so thrilled. So about that, I'm 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 a cyclist, but I I don't do uh, spinning. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, is it is it common for people to to bike to their spin class? Um, people do what's convenient for them, just like any other uh, type of workout. You know, so I go I go to Evolve Fitness down in uh, behind the Whole Foods, and there's always three or four bikes parked there. So it depends where you live and what your habit is, and where you're coming from, and where you're going to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know. People follow the path, path of least resistance. So what I'm trying to do with incentives uh, and raising their awareness about being greener, like kind of trying to hook into that sense of, yeah, I just drove like five minutes and then created, you know, I had to put a parking side here. Why didn't I just ride a bike down here? Why didn't I just walk? So I'd like to do some fitness tracker, you know, challenges, you know, mm-hmm. counting the steps you do to get to the class. Um, and once it becomes a habit, <coughs> you're like, well, it's not really that big a deal walking seven minutes from my house to go to the, you know, yeah. but people do what, what they're used to doing. So yeah. that's what the incentives are about, is trying to get them dislodged from their everyday yeah. habits of taking the car everywhere and thinking about it. Okay. I notice there's a lot of reliance on people taking selfies to prove what they did. So I'll be curious to yeah. see how that, how that works. Yeah, and I'm going to be working on, uh, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's, it's a, you know, trying to be creative about uh, incentives. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm going to be trying things out and seeing what yep. works and trying to provide not only incentives, but mm-hmm. a sense that there's accountability. Because uh, obviously if they just say, well, I drove there and I told them I walked. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's not good for me. That's not good for the town. It's not good for any of this. Okay. So uh, last thing was on the employee incentives. Mm-hmm. and. Um, um, so you've, you've thought about uh, tran- a transit incentive, a bike and walking incentive, and then sort of a, another incentive if people have to take taxis or, or something like that. Right. So if you, someone might say, well, I, I don't have a bus where I am. I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. hop an Uber to get over there. I'm, I'm going to give them a cash in, in incentive for taking other, you know. So it's like, well, getting money getting a subsidy on my T-Pass doesn't help me. Yeah. Then I'm like, well, I'll give you just another incentive. But it's one or the other. I'm not going to pay for part of your T-Pass and give you a cash incentive to help cover some of your other transportation. So um, you might you might want to think about that a little bit because that's actu- that actually kind of mirrors a weakness in the federal government's um, um, methodology for uh, for tax incentives for businesses that provide either transit or bicycle commuter expenses. Mm-hmm. Right now you can't combine them. So if someone were going to mm-hmm. do a multimodal commute, like if you had an employee who you know lived out in Boston somewhere and took yeah. the red line to Alewife with their bike right. and then rode their bike to your studio, right. um, they have to pick one or the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and it can vastly, ex- it giving right. people an incentive to do a multimodal commute can vastly extend uh, 
the, the reach of, of uh, the distance that people can choose to commute right. um, in order to get to your business. Right. Um, so, so if you want to be really cutting edge in your <laughs> TDM plan, you, you might want to um, think about how to allow people to combine both transit and, and biking. Okay. That's, that's a great suggestion. Um, one great thing about being a small business is if, if, if people are going to know when they're working for me that they can always just come say, gee, what about X? Um, so if I see somebody who is, is, is having that kind of commute, um, I'm, I'm gonna, that's something that's going to be very easily be a conversation. Um, I love that suggestion. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think you deserve to be commended for the TDM plan. I, th I think David's suggestions are good, but this is, I, I like the innovation of it. I like the creativity behind it. I like the project on the whole. Uh, I like the use of kind of an interesting building in town and repurposing something that's been empty for some time. So it's all to be commended. Thank you. Questions from the public, if any? All right. Turn it back to the board. Um, I'll move to approve the uh, uh, the application for special permit EDR docket number three five two three six Schooler. I've been pronouncing it Schuler this whole time. Uh, court um, with the general and special conditions as set forth in the uh, director's report. Um, including the uh, TDM and drawings um, set forth in the application for special permit dated November 22nd, 2016, as amended by additional plans provided uh, the night hereof. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Good, Good luck. Thank Good you luck. very much. I, I uh, did, did, yeah. did you need to vote on the sign, since I think it is a variance from the, the bylaw? That that yeah, that's the, that is one. Okay. So in your presentation, you said that there would be just room on the sign for the second tenant, but in the exhibit, I wasn't sure where that was going to go. So there, there would be one more tenant or two. I just saw a space in the plan for one additional tenant. I don't know who's the person to answer that. Yeah, I think actually the, I don't think that's known, but building owners. Um, well, so in the bylaw, you can have one freestanding sign in that district. So you you know you'd need to think about in your presentation. You said there would be room for the other tenant or tenants, I suppose, to be able to list their business on that sign. Okay. But the drawing. No, that, that I, well, I wasn't really clear about. I just wasn't clear if there was something. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I, there, w there wouldn't be room for another another tenant's information on that on side. That side. Okay. My, my understanding, based on the bylaw, you know, reviewing that, is that I believe this board has has the ability in this zoning district to issue special permit on on number as well as size and positioning of, of signs. Um, but under the bylaw, it seems that there's one freestanding sign, and should you choose a freestanding sign, then you can also have a sign on the building, but of a certain size. So if you see the front of the building, um, there is an existing sign on the front that says Arlington Lithographic. Yeah, mm -hmm. the other tenant could have that. Spot. Yeah, they could yeah. have that. I, 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 I do not intend to use that space. They could use that space. They could potentially also have awning. Um, and you can sign. also have the directional sign still on the building yeah. as yeah. well in that area. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and they could also have, you know, some sort of stenciling on their door because it's a glass door. So because I think we approved all the plans, including the signage okay. plan, great. I think you're fine. All right, fine. Hey, I also wanted to second what, what Andrew said. I think this is a great application. And um, the uh, whole shared parking, TMP, transportation is well thought out, something that we really ought to take as an example here, and mm -hmm. so, I mean, you're really preaching to the choir here on things <laughs> like making arrangements with some of the other businesses. I know that might have been a little easy because of the <laughs> Paoli connection, but nonetheless, that's exactly where we're going on a lot of the things that we've been yeah. talking about in the town and the master plan 
is creative ways to really, really reduce parking that are you know, real actionable items. So I really commend you on that. And um, I think it's a, it's a great application. Looking forward well, to it. I have no idea how Thank hard you. it is to find appropriate space <laughs> in this town for everything that's a bit like 15 or 17 feet wide. So. It was an incredible find. So. To, to the right. Faolis, what do you expect to put in the other tenancies? No. In you the think last this three or four years we've had probably 40, 50 people come walking through our doors, kicking tires, arranging everything from a cafe to uh, some sort of education incubator space. So, you know, who knows? This may this may spark trigger something. It'd be, yeah. yeah. be nice yeah. if this spurred it along. Yeah. There's definitely Especially businesses that would be complementary, including that's other lucky, other actually, fitness yeah. businesses, specialty yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah. I could see some yoga or Pilates or something like that yeah. in the rest of the space where they wouldn't be competing with each other. When would you expect to open? Probably have a good three months minimum of 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 uh, build out uh, that would be required. So uh, at this point, I'm looking at at sometime in the spring. Right. I wish the best luck. Good luck. Thank you very much, uh, members you. of the board and, and planning staff. Uh, have a nice party tonight and season's <laughs> greetings. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. David, you have a great party. Right. Are you allowed to bring bikes in the red line? Uh, it depends on the hours. Yeah, not during rush hour, right? Um, but uh, early in the morning, it could work. Uh, or or later, so it can yeah. work with the schedule as far as employees getting to and from. Right. Uh, with, uh, or you can bring folding bikes anytime. Right. Yes. But but you could also have someone who could permanently park a bike in the secure bike parking at Alewife right. and just leave it there right. and go back and forth on on the T to their home. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. they can put it on the bus from the bus and the bike. Yep, yeah, they can do that too. There's lots of options. Yeah. But frankly, sure. once you're at Al, I'd hop on the bike map and just ride right, right up here. That's right. what I would do. That's what I would do, too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no stops, just go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, great. Thank is, you so much. Is, really. is it is is Soul Cycle also a boutique, or is that a different? Animal? They are. They are. They're they're in yeah. that boutique genre. I mean, they were kind of the innovator yeah. uh, in this, and they've done just a magnificent job. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they don't come here, <laughs> uh, or at least don't come within like four miles. But I think it would be hard yeah. for them to, considering how long I've looked for space. It would be really difficult for them to find something yeah. unless they use their uh, right. their power to to find something. Right. But I could see them coming to Harvard Square or something like that. I mean, they're out in Chestnut Hill. They're down. They opened a they? spot down by MGH, and they're opening uh, in the Seaport. But I think they have a lot of different communities to. I, I think the communities they go after are. I, I would think just Arlington wouldn't necessarily hit their their radar yeah, screen right. at this point. I mean, they go. You know, they're going. I can see them in Wellesley. You know, they're in Chestnut Hill. They go for the lifestyle type malls and and you know kind of. Mm -hmm. pre-existing commercial spaces, so I think it would be hard for them here. Um, but they're great for demand because they raise demand and awareness of the genre, and then people are like, I want to do that, but I don't want to pay 35 bucks a ride to do that. Right. <laughs> all right, well, good luck. Good good thank luck. you very much. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, all. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Right. Good thank luck. Thank you. Happy holidays. Right. So with that, I will close public hearing EDR special permit talk at 3523 and move on to uh, Arlington Center for the Arts fundraising update for memory and understanding with ARB. We have Linda Shoemaker here, who's the executive director of the Arlington Center for the Arts, and we've been having conversations monthly, as you know, so she's here to provide you with a quarterly update. All right, welcome, Linda. Great. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. And hello, David. I think this is our first time meeting. Nice to see you. Um, I have uh, something for everybody. Uh, with our Thanks update and a few other things to, to see. I, I underplanned about one. Oh, actually, could I? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I underplanned by two. Um, so yes, <laughs> Jenny saw this earlier. Um, probably the biggest news and, and the proudest news of the moment today is that um, to this point, ACA has raised over $150 in uh, cash and pledges towards our capital campaign. And this puts us ahead of schedule, um, surpassing the, the benchmarks that we had projected for January. 
Um, still a lot of end of year money coming in. There was six thousand dollars in the mail today. So this is really we've really built some momentum, and we're really looking forward to reporting what the real number is uh, when we get to January thirty first. So that's that's going along really well. Um, the other big piece of work that we're in the middle of right now is uh, ACA is submitting an application for this major grant from Mass Cultural Council, the Cultural Facilities Fund. We're going to be asking them for $300,000, which we think is, is going to be half of the cost of the, the project. Um, we filed a letter of intent in November and moving forward with the final application, which is due uh, in mid-January. Um, we definitely don't want to count this chicken before it's hatched, but um, but we think uh, we will present a really compelling case. They know we're applying. They they understand what's happening with the Arlington Center for the Arts. Um, they're actively considering Arlington's application for uh, cultural district status, which is another program of the Mass Cultural Council. And I think you know, they're they're thinking about both those things together. Uh, I think they really want to see this happen. So we feel optimistic about that grant. Uh, we won't know the results. They'll make their decision. We'll hear in June. Um, and as you know, we're out of the Gibbs in June, at the end of June. So um, the timing is not ideal, but, but if we get it, it's perfect <laughs> because we think that we'll be, we'll be ready um, to meet the match by then. Um, so other upcoming things, I thought you would, uh, we'd love to have you join us if you can for ACA's next fundraising event, which is a gala fundraiser in January, January 28th. You've got a little save the date card in your packet, and um, we are excited about that. That's the first time we'll be holding a, a gala event at Town Hall, um, which might be a little preview of how we'll do things going forward. Now that we won't have the, the theater over at the Gibbs space, that'll be good event space for us, and we're excited to try that out in, in uh, January. The um, project planning is moving along. We are just about to release RFP for architect and design services after the, the, the turn of the year. Um, and the last thing that you've got in the packet is our little um, annual report on a page, which kind of summarizes the, the, the uh, notable events of the year and some of the facts and figures about the year at ACA. I think we all feel really proud of um, the fact that we've come out of what was really a challenging and difficult year for the Arts Center with actually one of our best years ever in terms of participation and revenue and um, fundraising and um, programming. So, you know, tr trying times um, sometimes raise us up, and I think that that's what happened for ACA this year. Um, we're excited about the next six months and meeting our fundraising goals um, before we move out of the Gibbs in June. So, Great. Any, any questions for me? Anything more I can tell you? So the grant is all or nothing? It's, it's, it's all or nothing. And it's a match, so you gotta, you got to raise it to get it. Right. If we okay. get 300, we need to raise the 300 before any of that is released. Okay. Okay. Um, Yep. Okay. So one of the requirements of the grant application um, that Linda and I have discussed is the need for some, you know, you have to show that there, or demonstrate that you have a lease, a leasing arrangement. And so the deadline is when again in January? 13th. January, January 13th. 13th. Uh, technically the MOU says Janu by January 31st to meet that fundraising goal. So the question is, um, if acceptable with, you know, for the board, if we could maybe accelerate a conversation about a lease or something else because they've met that debt they've met that goal and if there's any way to reconvene that subcommittee for example although timing i know is everything but it would be that the subcommittee with myself and adam the town manager and mike and we could discuss again you know if there's anything else that we need to um, address before moving forward and committing, because um, the requirements of the MOU have now been achieved. So that that was part of this, the intention of um, having Linda explain to you where she's at with her fundraising goals today. Yeah, I'd suggest that that subcommittee meet, even if it's via conference call, okay. just to go over the particulars and then put that on our Between next agenda. Meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Great. Not to add any work on to <laughs> you and Adam and Mike. But. No, it's, we could do probably.
good. I'm thank glad you. to hear it's been so successful. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. And thank you for coming to the to the ribbon cutting. That was fun. You're we welcome. Fun. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. Good. Great. Okay. okay. All right. thank Thanks, you. everybody. Okay. Yes. We have these downstairs. Yep. Thanks. Jenny, uh, 2017 meeting schedule. Oh, okay. So in your board packet, I think there's just one small change that we flagged, which was in the last schedule that you had approved um, or reviewed and approved. Mm -hmm. uh, Labor Day was on here, and we've moved that meeting date in okay. September. Correct? Mm -hmm. That was the only thing. Yeah. So September 11th is now the meeting date. It, it, the, all the Monday holidays kind of wreak havoc with the, with with the, the schedule. schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. so not even. There's some times when you've had two weeks in a row, and if we don't need to, we don't. And we adjusted the February and April vacation mm -hmm. to accommodate the February, the, those two vacations. So we, we didn't get the Labor Day one. Okay. So that's the only change. All right. So the February and April ones were already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. I think previously I was not sure about that. I may have said we, we didn't adjust, but it was Labor Day. And your report. Okay, my report. Um, so very briefly, we have identified somebody to become the next conservation administrator. As you know from previous reports, Corey Beckwith will be ending her tenure with the town actually December 30th. And we're still working on um, sort of to be announced the conservation administrator who will hopefully be starting uh, the week of January 3rd. So I'm just letting you know about that. That's to be announced, still no names yet. Mm -hmm. um, you already heard about the update on uh, the application to um, that we're working on with Linda. And um, Linda, actually ACA would be the lead applicant, not the town, but I'm providing support to her to you know make sure that she has all the appropriate materials to be filed. Um, I've reported previously on two CPA applications. Both of them have moved forward um, and are, of course, awaiting review. I'm going to be for Whittemore Park and then for the Historic Resources Inventory. Those were the two applications filed by our department um, in concert with other groups. Um, and then uh, the Mass Preservation Projects Fund is something that we're going to go back to again, either for central school building, for all the work that we've talked about doing for the senior center, or for the interior, um, some of the issues that we wanted to address on the interior of the Jefferson Cutter House. And I'll be coming back in January to talk with you about that. Just wanted to flag that for you. Um, and then uh, a number of things just related to January that I wanted to flag. Uh, one is the residential study group has created a survey um, that we're pretty much in the process of finalizing at this time um, that would go to homeowners and builders or contractors um, in sort of areas where they are there are known teardowns that have occurred or new homes have been constructed. And the idea of the survey is to understand sort of the different, differing, potentially differing perspectives of owners versus builders around um, potential neighborhood impacts and then things that need to be addressed as part of, you know, we've been talking about this good neighbor bylaw um, that again will come back later in January to you. So the residential study group has the survey. I'll share with you the final survey once I have it. Um, has yet to be completely finalized yet. So that was something I wanted to share. Um, I guess uh, just with Mike departing um, from the board, we've been getting resumes from people. The deadline for that is January 1st, and then we are hoping to interview people quickly thereafter and then there will be another appointment, so you hopefully will not be short a member, just to let you know. And then I didn't know if you wanted to report on any other news around other um, changes that might occur with the board, or? Not at this time. Not at this time, okay, got it. Um, so the housing production plan we talked about last time, the implementation committee, we're gonna come back in January also with um, a plan for how that implementation committee might look, who might serve on it and ask for your feedback on create, you know, turning the Housing Plan Advisory Committee into an Implementation Committee. Um, that was sort of the next step in that Housing Production Plan to get it implemented. Um, and then last thing is just um, in January, I think I've postponed this for a while and 
think Kim, you flagged it maybe the last meeting, which is um, we'll have a conversation about all of the capital planning, the ARB properties, the and then the various budgets for FY18 um, at the January 9th meeting is my intention. So at the moment, um, I think that's where we stand for the January timeline. Okay. So do As you have warrant articles? And the warrant articles, I know, yes. but that'll be. Dad, I do have one question on the warrant articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, you, we, you brought up some changes based on your feedback on changing some of FAR to encourage more uh, multifamily housing in certain areas. And um, when is that going to come around? Because uh, the town meeting is in April, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want to be rushed because we want to get enough feedback. Those will come back in January. The warrant closes That's at the end of January. Yes, we'll sir. have to decide whether to insert any article by the end of Jan January 28th? 23rd, 23rd, I think, is your... <coughs> so we'll oh, have that's a discussion right. about that before then. We don't have to discuss the final yeah. language mm -hmm. until after that. We just have to determine whether we want to put the placeholder, put the placeholder in to get to that point right. heading into town meeting. Okay, and, and then we'll have a public hearing in March. That's right. Um, I do have one thing I do want to add to it, maybe. Okay. I need to bring it up to the board to think about is um, I noticed there's a lot of non-conforming sites. Um, these are single-family houses that are non-conforming in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Well, is the lot size, size you mean? Or? Yeah. And, and no, let's just not just say the lot size, but let's say okay. it's, it's a non-conforming site based on either lot size or frontage or various reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, are we going to, I would like to maybe talk about entertaining something where uh, we allow it, allow something for it to be, if the house is so far gone that we at least can rebuild the house on exact same footprint, square footage and setbacks and everything else, but you get a newer building instead of one that's sort of falling apart because you can't renovate it properly because of it being non-conforming. Something I, I just want to bring up. I'm not sure is it here to bring up or uh, a subcommittee work with, or work with Jenny. Yeah, we can we can follow up in discussion. Okay. Did anybody have a question about that? Okay. No. Uh, just some uh, preliminary feedback for you on the two redevelopment board projects or oh, the, okay. the two projects from the CPA. I think the Whittemore Park one is challenged mm -hmm. uh, with the committee, um, yeah. and I think the historical inventory is viewed uh, my. From my gauging of the initial reaction was viewed favorably. So, Good. just to kind of, um, uh, you know, I, I think there's some landscape architects on the on the committee. There's a lot of historic preservationists. So, with respect to the, you know, when they see a plan for a historical park, they're like, um, they have thoughts right away. And so, I think that one might be a little bit more challenged. Just so you know. Okay. And what, can I ask about yeah. the Millbrook? Um, but the Mystic River I think people thought that was really, uh, uh, really well. Uh, you, you mean the 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 uh, Linear Park um, uh, pilot? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. It's I the, think that's what they were calling the it. Mystic River Watershed yeah. Association. They called it a they kind called it like a pilot. A yeah, they called it a pilot park. linear park. Pilot uh, linear park. Okay. Like, <laughs> um, and it was it was uh, um, Based is the wrong word, but but focused on uh, Wellington uh, yes. uh, Park back there, and right. and I, I think I think it was received very well. I think Good. I think it was a really nice application and uh, uh, really well put put together. Once again, first impressions. Yeah. We just kind of all read them and kind of uh, uh, gave impressions, and that's well, that was my sense for it. What is that? Is that is that trying to close a missing link somewhere? Uh, it's um, you trying know, to open it. I think. <coughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah. It's a it's an area that is owned by the town, but the the river is practically invisible there. You can't even see it. And then there's there's an area even farther back. Where there's like a bridge back there that. It's yeah, like a wooden bridge. Right? You can't yeah. really see it or get to it easily. So it's to make it more usable. And but it does. It's not connecting any existing. Well, paths it's or hard because like there's private property okay. uh, to the west. E if no, you I think was curious because I know the Mystic River Watershed Association has been working with like Livable Streets Alliance on their Green Links idea, um, you know, just trying to identify and 
uh, find ways to, to, to bridge uh, existing gaps in the path network. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think this is part of that, but think of it as <laughs> there's this much of a, of a gap yeah. And this is going to do this much right in the middle yeah. just to try to, at least that's the way it's written. It's a process. So. Yeah. It's a process. So, so this is the first of the, I think, it's to test it out. Andy, you'd like it. You, you, uh, you should and take a look at the application. It's online. You'd like it a lot. Yeah, I know. I, I've kind of been involved. In Have you? Years. Good. Okay. And there, there is an area that is owned by this condo association. Yes. That, um, but I think that they're going to try to test. They've gotten good permissions them. from them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they've obviously been in contact with them, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you yeah. probably know more than I do on this. Good. That's encouraging. All right. Anything else? Any, no, any questions for me? Any other comments? Um, one last one on, on the uh, ACA lease, I guess, yes. would be the only thing. Is, I, I, I forget, we never, we never got to the, they never commented on the lease, did they? No, they, they provided it in their proposal, actually. Did they? They okay. had comments on the lease, and we accepted, or we, we, we went, acknowledged many of the things that they had asked okay. for. Okay, okay. So we, we have to actually put together the lease. A absolutely, yeah. but but we did do some legwork. Okay. And getting old, I forget exactly what happened, so. I understand. Okay. You said okay. I understand a little too quickly. I, I think, Well, actually. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with just one last thing back to the CP, the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, I am meeting with Clarissa and um, Eric actually okay. this week to talk about the planning and community development department's involvement in reviewing Great. any applications, providing feedback. They're really looking um, for that. So, that's, so yeah. that's something that we will be doing. Just so Great. You know. Great. Good. Minutes from our last meeting. <clears throat> I didn't see anything. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second. December 5th, 2016. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the, the agenda says adjourn and reconvene, but we should actually recess and reconvene. Oh. I'll move to recess and reconvene. I'll second that. Aye.